But I have a lot of games. Almost 100 of them. I'll play different ones depending on how I'm feeling. There were Ufe all over the airport and civilians were being moved out. Looking at it one way, shutting down the airport for their escape was a weird sort of compliment. But one I didn't need. Max Payne 3, Prototype and Metal Gear Rising are there if I need to blow off some steam. Disco Elysium and Yakuza if I just want to escape into another world and forget about all my troubles. Thief and Splinter Cell, but let's be real, mostly Thief, if I want to feel like an invisible badass. And Lost in Vivo and Darkwood if I feel like, uh, shitting my pants. Each and every game in my library serves a purpose, and Megaton Rainfall is no different. Normally you play a game to have fun. <laughs> what? I know, right? What a, what a revolutionary concept. You know, excluding, uh... Um... But, Megaton Rainfall? Well, let me show you. Basically, you play as, a uh, god and have to save the earth from aliens. You yourself actually can't get hit. Your character is invincible. But if the city you're trying to protect takes too much damage, you get a game over. The struggle of the game is actually hitting the enemies because you're so powerful that if you miss, dozens of people could die. And if you miss one of your stronger attacks, you could just upright fail the mission. Pro tip, always aim the gigaton blast upwards. Don't make my mistake. So in a sense, this is the ultimate power fantasy. You literally can't even get hurt and you're flying all over Earth, obliterating legions of an advanced alien super army. If that isn't a power fantasy, I don't know what is. But that's not why I play Megaton Rainfall anymore. Sure, I beat the campaign and got all the Xenospheres in outer space, but after that, what's left to do? You can fly in Megaton Rainfall. The speed of your flight changes based off how far away you are from the ground, so the higher you go, the faster you fly. So check this out, I'm at one end of America right now, and actually America's kinda dark. Let's, uh, let's find some place in the sun. Okay, Africa works. But we can't use the entire Africa, let's just pick a pretty small place, uh, like right down there. Yeah, there, uh, that works. We're gonna be flying from this end of Africa to this end. Now remember, we're going like five times the speed of sound like this. Alright, you ready? Let's go. Stop, stop, that's... that's not happening. Do you want to know how far we got in that time? Yeah. Earth is fucking big. 
It would have taken us an hour to fly across just this tiny part at that speed. We only live on the surface so it's hard to tell but when you start moving this fast and only go this far, you feel small. Insignificant. But that's still not the reason why I play this game. After a couple of missions, you go to see your space dad again. It's uh, it's lore, it's, <laughs> it's a little complicated. Seriously, you should play this game for yourself. Uh, it's fucking rad as all hell. Space Dad will grant you a new power after every mission. The first one you start with is supersonic flight, which allows you to fly over the surface of the Earth. Which, by the way, as you've seen, we're talking like multiple times the speed of sound here. A couple more missions later, we get a new ability, like usual. But this one is called Superliminal Flight. Increase your flight speed from Mach 8 to 1 trillion times the speed of light. Yes. Seriously. The entire solar system. The entire solar system is how fast you can go. You can see the entire solar system just by flying around. And when you go to planets, they're like actually planets. Just as big or even bigger than Earth. And you can land on the sun because of course you can. I actually still have no fucking clue how they managed to do this in real time. It still blows my mind that this stuff is even possible. But then, you might make the mistake of trying to get to one of the outer planets. And then... This isn't even like a story thing. I just picked a random star and went to it. Look, there's two of them. And look, it has its own planets. Sometimes when you're trying to land on other solar systems, you whiz by them so fast because you forget you're moving at like millions of times the speed of light. Like holy shit, that was an entire solar system that I just passed in under a second. And now it's gone. I literally lost it. I was going too fast. Oh that star looks cool. Let's go to it. Surely you can't go to every single little star out in the galaxy. But you can! You actually can! They just look like little dust particles flying by, but each and every one of those are actually modeled solar systems with their own unique planets and moons and stars. But of course, this still isn't the reason why I play Megaton Rainfall. Because you can leave the Milky Way. It's even more terrifying in free mode, since the marker on the earth uh, that you normally see when playing is gone. Just whatever you do, don't leave the solar system, because if you do, you'll never find it again. <laughs> 